Okay, so I just have um, a number of questions and, you know, I think we sent them to you earlier. So, you know, and if you want to deviate, you have other things you'd rather talk about, I'm, we're very happy just to get, you know, be able to have your time. So, um, so we wanted to know, how did you become interested in wolves and how did your career specializing in wolves actually begin? Sure. Well, thanks for asking that. There, there's a lot to say, but um, I, I remember when I was a kid, I grew up in a rural part of Massachusetts where we had ponds and creeks and forests and meadows and all sorts of stuff. And I was definitely an outdoor kid when I was young. I'd be out all the time. And uh, all my friends were outdoor kids too. I remember that we had a farm across the street and we didn't have a dog, but they had two dogs. And one of the dogs was named Sheppy. He was some sort of a German Shepherd mix, I, I don't know. And uh, they were never on leash. They were never uh, chained up. They, they just did whatever they wanted to do. And I noticed that Sheppy would um, every day leave the farm and would just go off on a, a walk and come back many hours later. And so I thought, gee, I, one day I'm just going to follow him and see what he does. And that's exactly what I did. So he took off. He didn't seem to mind that I was following him. And he visited the pond. He took a drink out of the stream. He rocked through the woods. I think he chased a rabbit or two. And then when it was time, he, he turned around and walked all the way back to the farm. And I thought, gee, that was really a lot of fun. Um, I was maybe six years old, seven years old, something like that. And I, I was just thinking recently, that's in a way kind of what I'm doing right now, except I don't actually follow a wolf around. I watch them from a distance. And from a distance, therefore, I can be in one spot. And if they walk miles one way or another way, because it's open country here, uh, rather than forested, I can stay with them just watching with my um, spotting scope. So I'm still doing what I was doing when I was six or seven years old. Um, so how, so what made you, I guess, how did your career specializing in wolves begin? It was just because you, when you were working for the park service or what, what made you actually go in that direction? Well, I, I guess moving forward from when I was a kid, um, I'll, I'll try to condense a lot of personal history, but I think I'll just jump to the uh, stage after I went to college that I got a job in Alaska at Denali National Park. And I ended up working there for 15 summers. Oh, wow. And at that time, that was pretty much the best place in, um, in America to see wolves. Uh, it's nothing like what Yellowstone is today. This is infinitely better than it was in Denali. But back then, that was really considered a good place. So I, I saw wolves fairly often. I learned to identify certain individuals. And um, we also had grizzly bears up there, moose, caribou, doll, sheep. And I, I very quickly realized that the wolves were way more interesting than any of those other species. You know, certainly everyone that gets to see a grizzly, that, that's a very exciting thing because they're so big and uh, impressive and strong. But they pretty much do the same thing all the time, which is to eat vegetation and uh, do a lot of sleeping. Um, but it's great to see a grizzly. Uh, I realized that the wolves were had a lifestyle because they are professional predators and they live in a social group that they're way more interesting than than watching grizzlies. So in, in many ways, a, a wolf pack is, is like a large human family where they're interacting with each other. The alpha male is kind of the equivalent of a dad in a wolf family and the alpha female is kind of like the mom. And then there, there's different age categories of their sons and daughters. Some would be uh, two or three years old. Others would be yearlings, which would be somewhat like human teenagers. And then the pups are like the little kids. And uh, so there's just so much going on all the time um, that um, I, I was just fascinated by them. I, I, I certainly still like to see grizzly bears, but if I, if I, I had to choose between watching wolves and the bear family, I'd, I'd always go with the wolves because they're, they're just so much more interesting. Oh, that's great. That's a, a good way to put it. I guess wolves are um, a lot, behave a lot differently than dogs and or dog pack, right? 
Well, um, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, one way to get into it is to say Sorry, that uh, <laughs> I was curious. Uh, for those for people that are listening to us um, um, and have dogs, uh, a dog in your family probably sees the the dad in the house as the equivalent of a alpha male wolf in a pack. Sees the the mother in the in the house is the equivalent of the alpha female in a wild pack. And then the older kids in the family as the older siblings to the, the dog and the little kids as the, the, the younger brothers and sisters. So that's pretty much, I, I think, a, a good equivalent. And one of the things that's fun to talk about um, is uh, wolf biologists used to assume that the big, strong, tough looking alpha male would be the leader of the pack and the boss of everyone. It turns out that he just works for the boss and that's <laughs> the alpha female. So wolves um, are one indication of their intelligence level is uh, they have a matriarchal society. So the females rule the show. And in, in military terms, it would be like the mother wolf, the alpha female is the commanding officer. She's in charge of everything. And then the alpha male, he would be in military terms, the executive officer. So he would uh, work to carry out her orders and her, her wishes. And then all the younger walls, they're kind of like the, the lower ranking soldiers in the operation. I kind of so like the that. girls run the show. With <laughs> yeah. Great. And uh, the males are terrified of um, doing anything to upset the girls, because if they do, they're going to get beat up. And they're so intimidated by the females that they don't even fight back. So we had this little female, 926. And um, one of our stories here is that her first mate was killed by a pack of rival males. And uh, I'll condense very, very much the, what happened. But um, she went to four of the biggest and the strongest males that killed her mate. And in just one night, she converted them to her side. So they joined her pack and they helped her raise the pups that had been sired by the guy that they had just killed. Wow. And uh, they were definitely afraid of her. If uh, they made, a, if they killed an elk or a bison and they started to feed and they saw her coming, they would back away to make sure that they didn't get in her way they let her feed first. And if she if she felt that they did get it in her way, she would beat them up. So that's kind of interesting, Rick, because um, you know, I've been to Africa a few times and I know like the lions, the male lions and even in the male bears go and kill the offspring, you yes. know, from uh -huh. other and so in wolves, that mm -hmm. doesn't always happen in that case, right? They it's the yes, it's it's the exact opposite. We've had many, many cases. Um, of the exact opposite. I, in fact, I don't, um, I can't think of a case where um, a male has come in and killed pups. Oh, that's... Um, uh, yes. Um, we, one of our greatest stories in the very early years of the reintroduction, uh, one of the packs that was brought down for Canada, from Canada for the reintroduction was the Rose Creek pack. And unfortunately, a short time after they were released, the father wolf was illegally shot and killed right around the time that the mother wolf gave birth to eight pups. Um, she was a single mother at that point. And the, the, the chances that any of those pups were survived were, were pretty much zero. She had no one to help her. And um, we eventually um, caught the mother and all of her pups. We put them in a, a safe area. The rangers fed them until the pups were old enough with the mother wolf to be released. And then what happened next was pretty close to a miracle. A young male wolf, a yearling, Wolf 8, the hero of my first book, he came along, saw those young pups, and he wanted to help out. So he essentially volunteered to join the pack as their adopted father. That was the first case we had of an unrelated male adopting pups. Wow. And he did a great job of raising them. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, male wolves are the exact opposite of male grizzly bears and male African lions. Um, when they see um, pups um, 
that need help, uh, need support, need protection, need food. Um, they want to help out. That's interesting. I never even thought about that till you were talking about that. I'm like, you know, because you see, you see that so often with those other species, you know. Um,